Great events often have humble beginnings. Consider a quiet pond, still. The water is like a sheet of glass. Until I throw a stone, such a small thing. But soon, ripples engulf the whole of the lake. The Jinyu also have humble origins. Once primitive creatures, they were fortunate enough to live near the enchanted pools within the Vale. The magic of the pools expanded their minds and grew their bodies until they became one of the great ancient cultures of Pandaria. The wisest of the Jinyu are very wise indeed. They can speak to the rivers, the way you and I would consult our elders. In the whispering waters, they can hear the future. Think about it. The smallest voice can change the world. Consider that, friend. The next time you decide to start throwing stones. Mogu tell a legend about Le Shen, the Thunder King. It is said that he tore out the very heart of the Mogu god, and from that hateful act, he gained power over wind and storm. His followers fell to their knees before him. We will call you the Lightning King, they said. But Le Shen, did not agree. Lightning strikes in an instant and is over in a flash, he said. But thunder, thunder, thunder proclaims the coming of the storm. Thunder quakes the skies long before the lightning strikes, and thunder echoes in the hills long after lightning's power is spent. It is thunder that sends animals cowering and fills the hearts of peasants with dread. Let thunder be my herald, so that my power is felt throughout the land. I will be the Thunder King. In the ancient days before the sundering of the world, the Mogu emperors ruled over Pandaria. My people were made slaves, and they were afraid. The Mogu were masters of pain and torture, of dark magics and brutal weapons. No Pandaren, Hosen, or Jinyu could resist the power they held. And my people were afraid. It was the Mogu who built the Serpent Spine. The most unlucky of slaves were sent to aid in its construction and defense, to be fodder for the Mantid. And my people were afraid. The Mogu were children as well. Children of the Titans. They were once a legion of stone, heartless and obedient. By the Titans' command, they fought the terrible servants of the old gods. They shaped the mountains and carved the rivers of the land. 
and they created a magical cradle of life in a hidden valley that we now call the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. But eventually, the Titans fell silent, and their creations were cursed with flesh. The Mogu grew restless. Many generations later, when the Thunder King united them, they seized upon their legacy. I truly believe now that the Mogu thought they were doing the work of the Titans. They fought against the Mantid and used the powers of the Veil to create new life. Oh, but such terrible works. Parents cannot always be assured of the legacy they will leave behind. <sighs> How especially true this is when the parents are gods and their children monsters.
When the Sundering ripped apart the continents of Azeroth, we Pandaren thought that the rest of the world had been utterly destroyed. But as the centuries passed, one young explorer decided to see what was out there. His name was Liu Liang, and he set out to discover the world on the back of a turtle. We celebrate his bravery with statue and song, but uh, if you were actually there on the beach that very day, well, I'm sure he looked quite silly indeed. Oh, how the Pandaren laughed at him. But Liu Lang was more clever than anyone thought. Sea turtles always return to the beach where they were born. And so, despite the mists that envelop our land, he always had a way home. Every few years, he returned with tales of mysterious cities in the sand, nomadic people living on endless grassy plains, a great empire under the ice, and a magical kingdom gilded in gold. Each time he returned, more and more Pandaren answered Liu Lang's call and joined him on his growing turtle. They were the bravest among us. The explorers, the adventurers. And that is the lesson of Liu Long, my friend. Everyone always laughs at the explorer. They always laugh until he returns. We're gonna turn this place into a sinkhole! <laughs> To ask why we fight is to ask why the leaves fall. It is in their nature. Perhaps there is a better question.
Why do we fight? To protect home and family. To preserve balance and bring harmony. For my kind, the true question is, what is worth fighting for? So, it was a bear? In a hat! I am pleased to report that the battle at sea goes well, War Chief. Our forces report decisive victories off the coasts of Tenaris and Tol Barad. Alliance blood spills. This pleases me, General. There's more. I've received word that our southern fleet engaged an Alliance envoy. We chased the Royal Flagship until it ran aground. Aground? Where? Apparently, they found a massive, uncharted landmass shrouded by dense mists. And you let the Alliance get there first! Redirect the invasion fleet. General, you and your best veterans will pave our way. Storm the shore and paint this new continent red! There is no sign of Admiral Taylor or his ship. 200 ships at my disposal, yet the one carrying my son goes missing. What of their last message? Show me whatever you have. We have been drawn off course. Horn air fleet. Many casualties. Shipwrecked on an uncharted isle. But the White Pawn is accounted for. Repeat, the White Pawn is safe. And doing. Surprise attack! Requesting immediate if anyone's received. Sir, the Seventh Fleet has already been dispatched, but it could take weeks before it. There's no time to waste. We'll send a small elite force to secure this new land and bring back my son. Flagship's last reported position was below. Can you see anything? Fog. Nothing but dense fog. Wait. Land! Starboard! I see ships! Those are horde vessels. General Quarters, get our birds in the air! Clear the decks! Stations, people! Let's go to war! es eso? Almirante, la presencia nativa es considerable. Hay estructuras complejas. Menos charla. Centraos en el objetivo. Ya habéis oído a la almirante. Fuego en la base de la horda. Iniciad el ataque. Men, 
You've trained for this. You're among the elite. You are Skyfire men. This is the ship that took down Deathwing. You think some raggedy little horde outpost stands a chance against the pride of the Alliance fleet? No! Those green dirtbags down there plagued your homes in South Shore, laid siege to your children in Red Ridge, and massacred every man, woman, and child in Theramore. It is payback time! Our sweat and your blood, this land will be ours! Warlock, he couldn't have ported far. Must be another base. Nightwing, report. What's going on down there? No sign of the flagship. No sign of Admiral Taylor or Prince Anduin. Horde troops are swimming towards your position. Open fire at once. Admiral, I think they mean to surrender. They're not armed. They're just trying not to drown. You don't think they'll hesitate to strangle you with their bare hands? Gun them down! That's not right. This is a massacre. They were unarmed. I... I don't... I don't feel well. Maybe they deserve to die. You beasts! What sort of madness is this? Men, stand down! This is one of the natives. We are from the Alliance and mean you no harm. Tell me, what was that shadow you drew out of me? This is not the place to explain. In short, your own doubts have been made manifest as a consequence of your actions. You don't understand. We're fighting a war here. Oh, I understand perfectly. I have eyes. But Pandaria is not like whatever land you came from. It lives and breathes. You should be careful what kind of energy you bring here. Now put those weapons away! to our shores. The very land itself will respond to your passions and your violence. I do not know what the ultimate consequences will be. Nobody does. 